Hey everybody, welcome to 5-Minute Book Reviews. My name is Jerry, and today I'm going to re be reviewing for you Ghosts at a Watchman by Harper Lee. This is Harper Lee's second novel, and it is set in Maycomb, Alabama in the 1950s. The book was published by um, Harper Lux. Uh, I read a large print version because I bought the large print version at a Goodwill store. Uh, or maybe I bought it at a library sale. I like to buy books from libraries when they're selling them or Goodwills or places like that because I feel like books need homes and I like to rescue them. I have a real problem, but it works out really well. This book is a sequel to To Kill a Mockingbird. So if you've read that one, I think you want to read this one. It, it takes place 20-some uh, years um, after the original story. And it's, it's just a fabulous book. It took me about a week and a half to read it. Um, and it took me about less than that, maybe maybe two days to fall in love with it. Um, it's just an absolutely fantastic story. It's not an easy story to read. Um, it, it does get difficult at times. Um, it gets harsh, especially if you're sensitive to, uh, you know, the kind of language that was used in the 1950s with reference to, um, you know, uh, black Americans. It's very difficult, uh, you know, to get through that sometimes. And it's a struggle. Uh, the characters of all age, they've all developed, they, they've they all, they've changed a lot. And there's a lot of that that's not easy for, you know, to, to get through, especially if you did read the first book. Part of me thinks that that's what I just hated about this book. You know, it's just, um, you know, there was a time in America when, you know, people's ignorance exceeded their brilliance. And it didn't matter how brilliant that generation may have been coming out of the 1930s and 40s. Um, you know, there was just still a lot of ignorance that was going around. It was, it's very difficult to get through that. Um, and I think Lee brings that out to us in the way the language is presented to us. Ugly words. She reminds us of, you know, that um, even though she probably didn't uh, have this, have 2020 in mind uh, or 2015, but she reminds us, you know, as we think about it, that there was a time in the United States when life was harsh for for people, a lot harsher, you know, than our current politically expedient hashtag movements would have us to believe. What I love about the book, though, is that Harper Lee has a way of taking us from from thin beginnings and and you know whimsical kind of atmosphere to you know the dark depths of you know the characters and the dark dark depths of the story you know, where the plot starts to unfold and the conflicts start to develop. And what we see is that this is not necessarily a conflict about, you know, that we would describe like a man v. man conflict, but this is a conflict of kind of like a man v. self, a Jean Louise v. self, a scout v. self kind of uh, conflict that we have to worry about. And, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, we, we, encounter this absolutely brilliant, brilliant human being. Um, you know, I scouts character in to kill a mockingbird is just, I, I adore that character. Love it. Love her, her development, love the way she thinks and reasons and reacts and acts. And I, and I love her even more in this book, to be honest with you. Um, she's, she's grown up, but she hasn't quite matured yet. I think that might be the way I want to say it. So these are some hard things that we have to learn as we grow up, you know, that we have to learn to think for ourselves. We have to learn to make our own choices. Uh, we have to learn to live out the consequences of our choices, um, you know, and we have to learn along the way, I think, to love those whose choices and opinions differ from those that we hold. Um, I don't find it the least bit ironic that the last words that Jean Louise has to say at the, at the end of this book are very simply, I think I love you very much. I mean, that's the lesson I really think that we all have to learn along the way. I suppose those are really the words that every parent really, truly, honestly wants to hear from a fully matured and mellowed um, bottle of, of child. I suppose those are the words that, you know, every child needs to learn how to say after fully sizing up their, their, uh, their enemy. I love you. Strange words here on earth, perhaps even stranger words here in the United States of America. Perhaps love and all of its mysteriousness and confrontational reality is indeed a complex monster that we have to learn to wait for. And we learn to wait for it because, you know, as, as children, we're trying to learn how to love. And because as adults, we're kind of waiting for our children to kind of have their aha moment. Atticus Finch remains the hero in the story. He remains a wise teacher. 
He remains simply one of the most brilliant um, fictional characters uh, ever ever developed, and it's it's understandable why he is so beloved. He doesn't say much in the book. His character is not there all the time, but what he does say and when he does make appearance, it's brilliant, it's kind, and it's indeed loving. Hey, thanks for stopping by uh, my channel. Thanks for listening to my book review. Uh, tune in next time when I'm going to review a book called uh, Elephant Company. Um, it's really a good book, another good story that you're going to really want to check out. Hey, check out my Goodreads page. Uh, check out my blog. Please feel free to leave your comments, uh, your take uh, on the book review or your own uh, take on the story, uh, Go Set a Watchman, and subscribe to my channel when you get the chance. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.